Welcome back guys. In this new video we're going to take a look at the quantum mechanical picture of the atom. Now remember that our atom is basically an element. Within that element there are different shells. There's the first shell all the way up to the seventh shell. And remember the number of shells is based on the number of periods that we have in our periodic table. Remember periods go from side to side across the periodic table. There are seven periods so as we know right now there are seven shells that we're dealing with. As we discover more elements throughout the next several years, we'll add those elements to the periodic table and thereby expand to more shells. Just because it's only seven now doesn't mean it's always going to be seven. As we discover more elements and make new elements, the shell number is going to increase. Now what we're going to say here is, within each of these shells we have these sublevels. And remember there are four sublevels. There's S, P, D, and F. There's also more, more beyond that. There's G, there's H, but you just, just need to know these four basic types. We're going to say each one of these sublevels has a unique shape that's characteristic of it. We're going to say that each of these sublevels contains a certain number of electron orbitals. And each one of these electron orbitals can hold up to two electrons. If we look at the S sublevel, we say that it has one electron orbital. And each electron orbital we said holds two, so S can hold a maximum of two electrons. Remember, the shape of S is also a sphere. And also remember, we talked about the magnetic quantum number, M sub L. It's a way of describing the numerical value for each one of these electron orbitals. The M sub L value here would be zero. When we move over to P, P has three electron orbitals. Each one can hold a maximum of two electrons. So P can hold up to six electrons. Remember that P has unique shapes too. It has three dumbbells. And depending on which axis it's on, here these dumbbells lie on the x-axis, right? So this would be PX. These are on the Y. So these would be PY. These are on the Z. So these would be PZ. Now, remember, based on the M sub L value, each of these electron orbitals has a number 2. Minus 1, 0, plus 1. For D, it'd be minus 2, minus 1, 0, plus 1, plus 2. And remember, for D, each one holds two electrons, so it can go up to 10. Its shapes are 4, 4 leaf clovers, and then 1, barbell with the ring around it. For F, F has seven electron orbitals, so it can hold up to 14. Each of these has a number to it, negative three, negative two, negative one, zero, plus one, plus two, plus three. The shapes of them are we have three of these types of shapes, and then we have four double four-leaf clovers. Now, you may ask, how do I know these are the numbers for them? Remember, the M sub L value is connected to the L value. Since the letter is S, then my L value equals 0. If my L value is 0, then my M sub L is the range of that, so it's also 0. If the letter is P, then L equals 1. And the range of that for M sub L would be negative 1, 0 plus 1. So you can see how the relationships work out. If it's D, L equals 2. And remember, M sub L is just the range of L. So it would be minus 2, minus 1, 0, plus 1, plus 2. And then finally, if it's F, L equals 3. And then the range is negative 3 to positive 3. And that range, each of those numbers, represents an orbital for that sublevel. That's how everything's going to fit together. Now, as we get deeper and deeper into the chapter, we'll see how the fourth quantum number plays a role in this and what we call electron configurations. What do those have to do with the quantum numbers? But just remember, you have to remember the quantum mechanical picture to serve as your basis before we get to those more complicated ideas.